now, Mike's Thoughts. Man Hour Nation, I am pissed. I am pissed off. NFL now wants to play another international game in Africa. Yes, they want to go to Africa now. Germany isn't good enough. London isn't good enough. They want to go to Africa. Me and my man, Arthur Brown, had a great conversation last night. I'm a Chase fan, and he's a Dolphins fan. We were freaking hyped about this game. We're like, hey, man, let's go to respective stadiums. Let's meet up. Let's have a good time. Let's drink some brewskis and watch a great NFL game. But no, we're going to play it in Germany. NFL. We are all sick and tired of this international bullshit. We're tired of it. We don't want to go to Africa. We don't want to go to Germany. We don't want to go to London. Damn it, I want to watch the Miami Dolphins and Kansas City Chiefs in Rock Hard Rock Stadium. I want to watch Miami Dolphins versus Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium. It doesn't matter. Hell, it could be a neutral site somewhere in the West Coast. I don't care. But damn it, I can't go to the game because it's overseas. It's in Germany. I can't afford a flight. I can't afford a hotel. I can't afford the time off work. I wanted a good NFL game. And now you want to do more games in Africa? What are you guys thinking? Come on, NFL. I understand you want to grow the brand. I understand you want to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We get it. We understand what you want to do. But at the end of the day, NFL is America's sport. It is an American game. Stop going overseas. We sick and tired of it. We are sick and tired of it. Only game positive is we get to watch football literally from 9 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock at night. Only thing positive about it. Nobody wants to go to Africa. Cue that intro. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the Dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, get calm. You know what I'm coming to the same voice talking what you about to hear right here. I second that. Let's go. go. You know that that's us when we talking about sports. Uh-huh. Giving you facts on the field to the crowd. Uh-huh. Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four in the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're at the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live, all three speaks go. Mm-hmm. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckheister here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page. Go check out the blog section as well. But the most important tab on there right now for the next month is that listen tab. If you guys are going to miss any part of the show whatsoever, ever, yes, you can watch it on YouTube again. Yes, you can watch it on Facebook again. Yes, we upload the clips every three hours, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., 12 a.m. You get to drift every three hours. There's a new clip up there on YouTube or Facebook or TikTok. But if you guys want to listen to live, raw, uncut sports talk, heading the way to work, at work, coming home from work, sleeping next to your wife at home, click on that listen tab and bada bing, bada boom. It will take you to the best damn sports show on the radio planet. Guys, it is Tuesday. Tuesday edition here of Man Hour NFL Talk. It is time to overreact. Do we got patience or is it time to panic? We got to welcome some people in the chat. First off here, we got Casey Morgan popping in the chat here. What is up, Casey? Good morning to you. Good, sir. Beautiful family you got there, buddy. Beautiful family you got there. Nice. Nice. Jim Powell is in the chat. What is up, Jimmy? I love it. I love it. I love it. Casey says, did you see the Nick Chubb clip from last night? So, Casey, I was actually 
Uh, so I get off work about 9.30 at night, right? So I was actually on my way home. As soon as I got, I got home, uh, the other half, the wifey had the uh, game on, and she's like, you're never going to believe what just happened. And I was like, what? She's like, oh, they'll probably show the show the re- show the replay of it, right? Never showed the replay of it. Hoffy sent me a text like two minutes after that, like, look at this. I was like, oh, my God. That was the, one of the grossest things I've ever seen in my life. I thought it was broken, man. I thought the dude just like legitimately just snapped his leg in half. But it was it was the grossest thing that I have seen in, um, that I've seen in a very very long time. May, the the only thing that may have been grosser was when that Duke, was it Duke basketball player like he like broke his leg and like he kicked him in the back of the head. That may have been a little bit grosser, but oh my god, it was. I definitely saw the clip last night, Casey. It was. Oh, uh, yeah. My my wife is a surgical um the d- d- doctor and um she she couldn't handle it. So that tells you how bad it was. So ugh, ugh. But anyway, but anyway guys, it is Tuesday edition here on Man Hour NFL Talk. We're going to introduce a new segment today called Patience or Panic. Is it time to panic or is it time to still be patient? We we got three topics that I want to talk about there. And we're going to do overreaction too. We got to talk about Justin Fields' 23 QBR ranking. We got to talk about Nick Chubb. Is it time to overreact to there? Patrick Mahomes, $210 million fully guaranteed deal for four years. Highest paid quarterback in the NFL again, baby. Let's go. And Lions, CJ Garner Johnson out for the season with the pec injury. We got to talk about that and much, much more, guys. If you guys want to talk about anything today, if you want to, if you guys want to see me overreact or unreact to anything in the chat, let me let me know. I, I did uh, post a little poll up earlier on the uh, uh, pre show here, and uh, many people wanted, wanted want to talk about the Bengals 0 uh, 2 start, and that is actually on my first patient or panic of the day here. So, guys, as you know, Joe Burrow re-aggravated that calf injury on the last play versus the Baltimore Ravens. But they said if they were to get the ball back, he would have come back and finished the game. However, the Bengals do start the season off 0-2 this season, losing to the two divisional foes, which is huge in the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. But most importantly, Joe Burrow's second straight year with a slow start. So guys, as we see all this all this thing happening here. Do we need to panic in Cincinnati or do we need to be patient? Do we need to slow it down, baby? Guys, when we look at this record of the Cincinnati Bengals, 0-2, that is not terrible by any stretch of the imagination, right? Because there are a lot of teams that are 0-2. With the 17-game season, 0-2 is not that big a deal anymore, right? Because in years past, when it was 16-game season, 0-2 teams only made the per, uh, playoffs like 10% of the time. Now, with the additional game, it's gone up to like 20%, right? It is, it, there's there's still a little, a, still a little wiggle room, time to improve a little bit. But if they go 0-3, holy crap, baby, slow it down. So, I think it is 100% time to panic in Cincinnati. It is a hundred percent time to panic in Cincinnati, not because they're not a good, good team. I still think they are a good team, but with a hobbled Joe Burrow, with a hurt Joe Burrow, they cannot push the ball down the field. Joe Burrow is getting hit over and over and over again. Their running game is now anemic at best because they can't push the ball down the field. The biggest threat on the whole field, Jamar Chase, is is no longer a threat. Guys, it is time to panic in Cincinnati because you play the Rams on Monday night football. Yes, Joe Burrow does have that extra day to heal, maybe get, get ready for the Rams, but then you have the Titans, Cardinals, and Seahawks. And then a big showdown with the San Francisco 49ers coming up. So... What I'm going to suggest here might kind of come out of left field a little bit. Since we are panicking because of the Joe Burrow injury and the 0-2 start to start the season and, and losing to the Browns and the Ravens, maybe, just maybe, we need to look at long-term goals here. Maybe, just maybe, for the Cincinnati Bengals, we need to consider, hmm, 
if Joe Burrow is not 100%, maybe we need to shut him down for like a little while. Maybe Joe Burrow needs to get on a hoodie and a pair of, pair of sweats and get 100. Because right now, we suck. Let's just be honest. The Cincinnati Bengals right now suck. They are not a top 10 team. They're not a fifth top 15 team. Hell, they're not even a top 20 team in the NFL. They are a terrible, terrible NFL team right now. So how, I mean, obviously you wouldn't get worse if you bench Joe Burrow for, not, not, not bench, sit. Sit Joe Burrow for a week or two. Let him get just a little bit more healthy because you got to, the Bengals got a rough stretch moving forward. Yes, they do play the Rams, Titans, and Cardinals the next three games, three very, very winnable games with the backup quarterback and then the back at home versus the Seahawks, a much improved Seahawks team. But let's look at this move moving forward. The 49ers, the Bills, you play the Ravens again, the Steelers, the Jaguars, a sneaky good Colts team, the Steelers and Chiefs and Browns again. Guys, the Cincinnati Bengals need Joe Burrow from week seven and on. Right now, shut him down. Get 100%. It is, but it is time to panic in Cincinnati. Because if they don't do that, watch out. Watch out, baby. John says, yep, it is time to panic. Panic in Cincy. Panic at the disco. <laughs> yes, with uh, Casey says, yes. With how much Cincinnati talks crap, I am enjoying seeing that 0-2 start next to the Bengals. Let's go. I love it, Casey. Yes. <laughs> the only other team that I would have loved to see start 0-2 are the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> I lied, just be honest. But right now, the Baltimore Ravens fans are pounding their chest and let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, but yeah. He says, good morning, armchair quarterback and functional GMs. Beautiful day outside in Michigan. Listen, if we are not playing the armchair quarterback or armchair general managers here, what are we doing with our lives, John? Let's just be honest. What else would we be doing on like on this Tuesday? We are we are going to nitpick every decision made from here until next Thursday, and then we got to do it all over again next week, John. Come on, you know it. <laughs> you know it. Franchise guy, protect their investment. You know, I didn't even think about that. Joe Burrow did just sign that, what, $210 million deal or $240 million, million deal over the next three five years, wasn't it? They got a long time with Joe Burrow, and if he's has a nagging calf injury now that could basically derail the whole season, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. But I think it is time to panic in Cincinnati. Now, let's talk about Jim's favorite team. That's right, Jim. I see you in like like in the uh, chat. Says the clip is the reason why the squeaker and the hooker are dubbed. But, Jim, let's talk about your team. Your favorite team that you love to hate. And that is the Denver Broncos. Guys, the Denver Broncos are now 0-9 in their last nine games when they have had a halftime lead. That's right. Going into the third quarter, if they have had the lead, the last nine times they have lost that lead. And they are now playing, now they, they have, they've started the season now 0-2. Next week they play Miami, and then they play the Bears, and then they play the Jets. Guys, is it time to panic or be patient in Denver? It, do we need to let the Sean Payton effect kind of sizzle a little bit? Well, let's just be honest, guys. This Russell Wilson experience for the Denver Broncos has kind of been a flop. Let's just be 100 about it. It has been a complete flop, and I don't even know if I want to ever watch a Denver Bronco game again. I don't care if Sean Payton can turn it around, right? You guys understand that the Denver Broncos had a 23-3 lead going into halftime over the Washington Commanders and lost 35-33. to Yes, they had a great Hail Mary to end the game. Yes, they they showed some grit, showed some will, showed a little bit of nut package up gum. But, but guys, 
it is time to panic in Denver. The reason why it is time to panic in Denver, because the Denver fan base is growing impatient. The Denver fan base is growing sick of Russell Wilson. You guys are not going to beat the Miami Dolphins. No way, shape, or form are you guys going to go into Miami at a 1 o'clock game and beat the Miami Dolphins. Not going to happen. Bears, very winnable game. Jets, very winnable game. Won't win neither of them, but then you look at the rest of the schedule moving forward. Chiefs, Packers, Chiefs, Bills, Vikings, Browns, Chargers, Lions, Patriots, Chargers, Raiders. What? We're we're, we're looking at an 0-17 schedule. You guys are not going to win a game. It is time to panic in Denver. Denver needs to figure something out right effing now. If they don't figure it out right now, as in beat the Bears or beat the Jets, it is going to be a 0-17 season. It is time to panic in Denver. Denver Broncos fans, hit that panic button. Say, we want a quarterback. We want a quarterback. <laughs> they need something. Like, I I don't know what is missing in Denver right now, but they don't have it. They don't have is. They don't have and. Or they don't have or. They need one of those four to show up and just do something. Preseason. I was like, man, I can understand why the Denver Broncos fan base is hyped about this. I like what Sean Payton is doing. I kind of like their structure of their offense and defense are looking good. They're looking pretty young. They're looking pretty chipper. But winning cures all. And right now they're losing. <laughs> no more kissing babies, right, Russell Wilson? You're not running for a, a senator. <laughs> Guys, panic in Denver. I don't know what you guys got to do to fix it. Completely blow it up. Completely do something. Jess could be looking for a quarterback. Get Russell Wilson out of town. I, 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 I don't know. Something. Shake the cage and do something. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe bring Tom Brady out of retirement. <laughs> he he is part owner of the, like, of the Raiders, so maybe he can like, hey, We'll give you guys a little extra incentive if you take if you tank versus the Broncos when you're playing me and don't touch me. <laughs> uh, heading to the glue factory, says John. <laughs> they are heading to the glue factory. So l- let me ask you guys this 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 question. Let's say let's play the what if game here, right? What if the Denver Broncos do go zero and seventeen? Obviously, last season that they won what. Five games with Nath- with Nath- with Nathaniel Hackett. Obviously, the worst coaching staff of all time. Air quotes. Those are uh, those are uh, 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 Sean Payton words, not mine. But obviously, zero and seventeen is a little bit worse than five win season last year. Five and twelve, right? If they, what if the Denver Broncos go zero and seventeen? What has to happen? Does Sean Payton get fired? Does Russell Wilson get traded or like or like or cut? What is the realistic expectation we we can expect from Denver? Because didn't they uh, didn't the Broncos have to give a first round pick to the uh, Saints for Sean Payton too? So really, you are on the hook for a lot of freaking draft picks for those two guys. And I feel like if you go one seven, one of them has to go. 0 and 17, I said I should say. One of them has to like, 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 like has to go. Jim says, let's talk about how the Hail Mary worked and didn't work at the exact same time. So, as a defensive minded head coach, when I saw that Hail Mary go through the first guy's hands, bounce off the second guy's helmet, went through the third guy's hands, hit the fourth guy's hands, and he bobbled it and then he caught it, my blood was boiling. Knock the ball down. That is all. <laughs> that is all you had to do. But yeah, when you have a hail mary and you still can't complete a two point conversion, that's the biggest mac in the face. Casey says Denver's been in panic mode since last season. No, Denver's been in panic mode since Peyton Manning retired. 
let's just be honest. We talk about Cleveland Browns kind of being in in that quarterback carousel, right? Denver Broncos, they have had just as many quarterbacks since Peyton Manning retired has that 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 the Cleveland Browns have had. Think about this. They've had Drew Locke like twice, right? They traded him to Houston and he came back and they traded him again. Uh they had um I, I can't even think of the names right now because like I'm there's there's been so many of them. <laughs> uh, the other guy they traded to Houston, uh, guys. The, the Denver has been in, been in panic mode since Peyton Manning won that Super Bowl, and then they traded Von Miller, and they're like, "Oh, we're up on the trends." And then they traded Bradley Chubb, we're like, "Oh, we're going to get better because we traded our two best best defensive players." Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Wilson is acting like the 80s rock star without the personality. Jim, you always with the fire, man. Looking at the fire, baby. Looking at the 2025 draft. Jim, you do got some fat fingers, man. <laughs> Draft with the four in 2024 draft is like is up next. So are you thinking that the um, uh, Denver Broncos go with Caleb Williams? Caleb Williams is only a junior, and he flat out said, uh, "If the team at the top, he 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 doesn't like he like he'll just go back to like school." <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. What's up, Joey? Joey's in study hall. The man behind some of the memes at Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash man hour. If you guys see a controversial post nine times out of ten, it is it is it, it is Joey. <laughs> what, what's up, Joey? Hope, hope, hope you're having a grand old game. And Jim says the Chargers are two very winnable games for the Broncos. So let's let's dive a little bit deeper into this Denver Broncos schedule. Now, obviously, 0-17 is an extreme worst case scenario, right? Now, the Denver Broncos do have a pretty tough schedule. Now, uh, uh, let's just be honest. Nobody thinks they're going to beat the Miami Dolphins. No way, shape, or form. So let's just go ahead and give them an L. The Chicago, the, the Chicago Bears freaking suck. We're going to talk, talk about Justin Fields in a little bit, but the Chicago Bears freaking suck. Let's just be honest. That is a very, very winnable game. New York Jets is at home. I actually had the Denver Broncos beating the Jets with Aaron Rodgers, so I, I think the New York Jets will come into mile, in, into mile high and just not be very good in that game. So there's two possible wins. I feel like they could probably beat the Chiefs at home as like as well. Chiefs right now are not looking very, very good, and it's a Thursday night game. So Thursday night game, short work week, home game, Chiefs are kind of like basic bread and butter play, whatever. Possible three wins there. Packers, what Packers team is going to show up? The Packers team that beat down the Chicago Bears or the Packers team that shit the bed versus the Atlanta Falcons? Four possible wins. I don't see them beating the Buffalo Bills. I don't see them beating the Miami Boston's. Browns, no. Texans, possibly five. They always split with the Chargers uh, for somehow, some way. They always split with, split with the Chargers. So six pa- possible wins. And then the last game versus the like the Raiders, and they always split, split with the Raiders. So seven wins is not a reach for the Denver Broncos by any stretch of the imagination. But if they can split their division, beat the Chiefs one time, beat the Raiders, and beat the Ch- Chargers at like at least one time, I think that alone will save Sean Payton's job and Russell Wilson's job. Um, John says Russell isn't Drew. Isn't he an Uncle Drew, though? <laughs> Casey says there's a reason Seattle never made a Super Bowl after the Legion of Boom went away. <sighs> uh. Is Russell Wilson really really to blame, though, for them not making the Super Bowl? Because let's just be honest, after the Legion of Boom kind of disbanded, right? 
Pete Carroll and the general manager of the Seahawks never really rebuilt that team, though, right? They were more worried about the offensive side of the ball. They, you know, they got Tyler Lockett, they got DK, right? Um, uh, and and then a uh, Carson, uh, is it Chris Carson? And, and, and just they they never really got that guy on the defensive side of the ball. And when they tried to make a big splash by getting a guy in Jamal Adams, he's played like ten snaps for him. All it's like his whole career, like just like just like over there. I don't know. It is what it is. James says, "I think Caleb will will, will enter the enter the draft for, for Denver and Sean Payton are the number one, if Denver and Sean Payton are the number one spot." Russell Wilson had signed a three year deal, right, guys? So this is his second year. Next year will kind of be a prove it year. Well, I guess this year's a prove prove year, but ne- do you do 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 you guys think legitimately that the Denver Broncos would draft a quarterback even though they got Russell Wilson from the next two seasons? I guess you can kind of sit there and let him marinate, I guess. Like I'm not for sure. That is a good game. Uh, James says the Denver Broncos is a trap game versus my uh, versus my Miami Dolphins if they look past Denver to Buffalo. Listen, every time eh, these games are always tra- trap games, James. You are one one hundred percent. When a shitty ass team like the Denver Broncos or the Chicago Bears for my Kansas City Chiefs come into town. Yeah, and you have a big game the follow the following week. Yes, it is a very much of a trap game. Very much of a trap game. One hundred percent. Drew Brees. What are we talking about? Oh, Russell Wilson isn't Drew Brees. Got it. Very very true. They look alike though. I think they're both white and they're both like five ten. So <laughs> Russell Wilson's half black. I know. Next, patience or panic of the day, guys. The last one that I got here. Let's talk about the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots are officially 0-2 to start the season for the first time since 2001. However, the last time they started 0-2, they went to the Super Bowl and they won the Super Bowl. But let's not get it twisted. This is no way, shape, or form the New England Patriots of old. So, with his 0-2 star, is it time to panic or be patient in New England? There's been a theme of today's show, guys. Panic, 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 panic. Put the red button. We need to figure it out. Well, guess what? This is the exact opposite. The New England Patriots are A-OK. They just need to execute patience. Hoffy, you need to execute patience. New England Patriots fans in general, execute patience. You guys realize that you have had a kind of a tough stretch, right? You play the Super Bowl runners-up versus the Philadelphia Eagles, right? They come out smacking the mouth 16-0. You only lose 25 to 20. Slow it down, right? Week number two versus the high-fly Miami Dolphins. 36 points come week one. They score seven points in the second half. And you lose 24 to 17. You guys are figuring things out in the second half. So once the New England Patriots defense puts a complete game together, look out, baby. They do play the New New York football Jets this week at New York. MetLife Stadium. Half of the crowd might show up. But this is a time to complete, to put a complete game together. Then they play the Dallas Cowboys. A perfect time to put a complete game together. And the Saints and the like like in the Raiders. Guys, it is time to be patient in New England. Offense, brand new offensive coordinator. Still trying to work out the bugs, work out the kinks. You're still putting up 20, 17 points. You know, you're still still putting up offensive points there, right? Defense is showing up in the second half. Once that all comes together, the defense shows up for a full game. The New England Patriots are going to be a really, really good team. They are a really, really good team. It is time to be patient. For you New England Patriots fans. Yes, you do play the Jets this week. And then the Cowboys Saints. But then you have the Raiders. And then you have a struggling Buffalo Bills team. That's right. The Buffalo Bills suck. Let's just be honest. And then the Commanders and Colts and Giants. Like, 
slow it down. Slow it down, baby. Be patient. We're going to figure things out, and you'll be okay. There is no need to panic in New England. Now, now, let's put a caveat on it. If you do lose to the New York football Jets, panic, 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 panic. But right now, patience. Execute those patience, guys. Something that men do not have. Like my GPA used to say when the cow drinks the bucket of milk, it all comes back to me now. What the hell are you talking about, John? Like my GPA used to say, when the cows drink the bucket of milk, it all comes back to me now. Oh, like my grandpa used to say, I have never heard that saying before, but I feel like this is how like um, e- e- like Ebola starts. I don't know. Casey says, Mac Jones isn't TB12. He's not that guy. Still unproven. Waiting for him to shut me up. So Mac Jones had a great rookie season, right? Nobody expected him to even be on the field. Cam Newton was supposed to be the guy. He says, Cam Cam Newton, you dumbass can't even read the playbook. I'm a rookie. And I'm teaching you how to play football. Understand playbook led them to the playoffs. Yeah, they got blown out by the Buffalo Bills in that playoff game, but led them to the playoffs. Next season, new offensive coordinator, the worst offensive coordinator in the entire NFL, a complete shit show, yes. However, this season, one of the best, that's right, the best offensive coordinators in the in the uh, NFL and Bill O'Brien. Week one versus the Eagles, he did have 300 yards passing. He does have 547 yards total passing this season. Not, not too shabby. The only thing I'm worried about the buff the uh, uh, the uh, uh, New England Patriots right now is their rushing attack. Stevenson only has 75 yards rushing. Zeke had like a total of 12 yards uh, versus the uh, um, week two game. Whoever they play, I forget forget who they played. Miami Dolphins. So Mac Jones is fine. The defense will put it together. The rushing is what I'm really concerned concerned about john says it's totally time to panic i'm not panicking you're panicking (laughs) totally time to start panicking they're not going anywhere at least not this year all the wind power of the pats is in vegas hoff is a closet raider fan Hoffy, you going to let Jim Powell come here and talk shit about your head coach? <laughs> uh, Raiders nation for life. John, every time I see this, I see the word anal. <laughs> I see the word anal. Casey says, Cam and washed up. Had fee, feel good season, then his ego took over. Listen. Let's go back to Cam Newton as a New England Patriot. Me as a person that is recovering, that has been recovering from shoulder shoulder operation for like seven years, years now, right? I tore my bicep, tricep, labrum, and rotator cuff, right? It was a complete shit show. Watching Cam Newton throw the ball in New England when he couldn't even like, he was, he was like, he's like, uh, shot putting it, right? That hurt my old arm. All over again, watching him throw throw the ball. Cam Newton was a complete shell of himself in New England. Now, he did, was it the next year, right? He did have kind of, of that coming out party in, in Carolina. I'm back. And then he went back into the closet. <laughs> but, yeah. Cam, Cam Newton was, uh, definitely had an ego problem. I, I definitely had an ego problem. And yes, Grandpa John, I I, I do, uh, I saw the G Paw now, right? G Paw. But l- let's go back to the saying. Like my G Paw used to say, when the cows drink the bucket of milk, it all comes back to me now. So the cows produce the milk, and then the cows drink the milk, and they produce the milk, they drink the milk, produce the milk, they drink the milk. So let me ask you this, John. My, my brother in law is a cow farmer 
in theory, if he has a calf and he milks that cow and then feeds the cow his milk, does he ever have to feed the cow again? Or can the cow be self, self, self sustained? <laughs> I'm just asking. Nah, I'm giggling, still mad about the tuck rule. <laughs> That's a Kansas City thing, I suppose. Uh, what are we talking about, Kansas City, City, City thing? Oh, anal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, a wise woman once told me on my way to college, she's like, there are two rules. Always get a blowjob and always stick to anal. I will not tell you who told me that, but my mom was a very wise woman. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. That is enough to talk about anal and blowjobs for today. My hands are small. It makes my penis look big. Let's move on. <laughs> it is time to overreact, guys. We've been panicking. We've been being patient, but it is definitely time to overreact or unreact. This is basically what we've just been doing, but different words. Do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Time to overreact. Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears. Yesterday on the show, I said bench the man. Bench the man in the third quarter and let him sit and watch and ponder his ways. And many people are saying, Buck, you are overreacting. You need to slow it down. Justin Fields is the greatest quarterback of all time in Chicago. And then my man, Soup Boss sent me these stats. I don't have the stats off the top of my head. I actually posted them on the Facebook page. So if you guys are following the Facebook page, be sure to go check out this, this uh, 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 stat here. But Mitchell Trubisky has better stats than Justin Fields over the length of his career, right? So for the last three seasons, Justin Fields' stats are worse than Mitchell Trubisky's. And you guys remember, right? Mitchell Trubisky is the worst quarterback ever. He is this, he is that, right? So people are like, man, you're overreacting. No, I'm not overreacting. Justin Fields is a shit-ass quarterback. His QBR is 23. Not 123, 23. That is 30th in the NFL. 3-0. There are two quarterbacks worse QBR than Justin Fields right now. One of them being Bryce Young and the other one being C.J. C. 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 Stroud. Two rookie quarterbacks. QBR of 23. Guys, it is not an overreaction that Justin Fields needs to be benched. It is not an overreaction that Justin Fields is not the savior in Chicago. It is not an overreaction that Justin Fields is never going to win an MVP, never going to win another game in Chicago. He has 12 straight losses. He is 5-22 and 22 as a starter. Name me one starting quarterback in the NFL right now that is 5-22 and 22 and not, his job is not on the line. Give me one. Oh, you can't because there's not. There isn't. The worst quarterback in the league right now with the winning percentage besides Justin Fields is Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson at least has five wins in a season. Zach Wilson has eight total wins as a starter. Better than Justin Fields. Guys, stop trying to tell me that I'm overreacting. I'm not. Justin Fields is shit. He's terrible. 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 The Bears in the shitter. <laughs> I saw their video last week without McMahon. That team has no juice. Listen, the Bears are shit. Justin Fields may not 100% be the problem. It's the play calling as well. They were on their two-yard line, Jim. Two-yard line. They run three screens. Not three screens the whole drive because the drive was a three-play drive. Three screens back to back to back into a pick six. Uh, what? I don't know. Super Bowl shuffle. <laughs> Typical Ohio State quarterback. 
looks like a superstar playing against not so good Big 12 teams, and they ain't gets his ass handed to him in the NFL. Hang on, Jared James. Let me wipe off this little stuff I got on my pad here. I had Pop Tarts this morning, James. I had birthday cake Pop Tarts with a little bit of sprinkles. You know, there's some blue ones, a little bit of red ones, some white ones there. Let me wipe this off before I to totally destroy you. You know that I'm a Big 12 guy, James. You know I went to the, the Kansas State University. The Big 12 isn't shit, James. Don't you ever talk shit about my Big 12 again. Unless it's Kansas. Fuck Kansas. But, <laughs> no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not fucking with you. I'm just messing with you. They haven't had a good team since 85. John, John you are my resident NFL expert here because you got the four-letter name here. But slow it down, baby. Let's not forget about the double doink. Let's not forget about the double doink in Chicago. <laughs> Weren't they 13-3 and three that, that, that season? I think they were. Double dinked it against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles at home. The Bears have had somewhat success. Mitchell, Mitchell Trubisky has had, has had better, better success. Jim says, if you can't dominate the line of scrimmage, why not run the run to the pylons every single time? If you can't dominate the line of scrimmage, why not run the pylons every single time? Jim, I'm not I'm not fully understanding what you're saying there, my man. Are you saying you just want to run sweep sweep plays every like like every time? Oh, from the two. From the two, run to the pylon every like every time. I don't know. I'm not a smart man, but I play one on TV, and, and the smart man tells me if you're on the two-yard line, don't run screens. I'm just going to pound it up the middle, try to give my punter some freaking room. But, hey, where the men are men and the sheep are nervous. In Chicago or Kansas City there, John? John, wait a wait a second. Wait one second, John. Didn't you just say earlier it's a beautiful morning out there in Michigan? How are you a Raiders fan? How do you live in the state of Michigan? A beautiful state. I love me some Michigan. My grandparents lived up there, spent a lot of summers up there in Michigan, Cal Cactus, Michigan, actually. Beautiful, beautiful place. I have an aunt and some cousins that live in Flint. Beautiful, beautiful place. How do you live in Michigan in a Raiders fan? I'm very confused by that, Jim, or John. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. Nick Chubb and the Cleveland Browns. Nick Chubb and the Cleveland Browns lost last night for the for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Nick Chubb went out with a potential season-ending injury. If you guys saw the injury, you know that this guy is not coming back from it anytime soon. It was gross. It was disgusting. If you, excuse me, if you have a weak stomach, do, do not look it up. They did not show it on TV. They did not show it on the big board at the game. It was a very, very ugly time. So, guys, is it time to overreact in Cleveland with Nick Chubb being out Deshaun Watson looked like a complete shit show after Nick Chubb went out, got sacked six times, I think, after Nick Chubb was injured. Is it time to overreact? Is it time to push the panic button in Cleveland? So I got to thinking about this. When this first happened, I'm like, man, the Cleveland Browns are done. The Cleveland Browns have no future whatsoever. I, they have potential of winning the AFC North, making some noise in the playoffs with Nick Chubb and bada bing, bada boom. That just literally blew up in like in, like in our faces, right? And then their backup running back came in, Jermone Ford. Don't know much about, about the guy, but we all know about Fords. They run for about a hundred, like a hundred thousand miles, and they shit at the bed, right? facts but J J Jamon Ford kind of brought that a little bit of juice to them right kind of brought that little bit of uh, 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 to them right 
So if I'm thinking like, well, I'm like, whoa, okay, slow it down, baby. Clear your head. Let's give this Jermon Ford guy a good evaluation, right? Let's see what this guy is all about. I liked it. He was running people over. I believe it was uh, sometime in the fourth quarter they ran like a pitch to the left. The dude was getting pushed back like 10 yards, like, oh, shit. And then somehow he got a first down. I'm like, whoa, what? Whoa, baby. But then I got to really thinking. Then I got to really thinking. There are a couple free agents out there still. Cream Hunt. He was a Cleveland Brown just last season. But then most importantly, Jonathan Taylor. Jim Ursay and the GM of the Indianapolis Colts said, we are going to exercise the trading things of Jonathan Taylor. We're going to reopen up those talks. Also, Cam Akers is now on the trading block as well. The Rams said, get out of here, boy. We don't want your kind no more. <laughs> Healthy scratch last week versus the 49ers, and it's still about one. So, guys, it is not time to overreact in Cleveland. It is not time to panic. Let's be patient. Let's be patient in Cleveland. Let's see how this plays out. Let's see if Jermone Ford can do well this week. The Cleveland Browns, you know, they are they are obviously one and one right now. They're at home this week and they play the Tennessee Titans. And then the following week, they play the Baltimore Ravens and San Francisco 49ers. Wouldn't it be something? If Jonathan Taylor got traded to the Cleveland Browns week six, and bada bing, bada boom, he's playing at Indianapolis versus the Indianapolis Colts. So I'm not going to overreact. I'm not going to panic yet. I'm going to be patient. I want to be patient. I want to see what Jermone Ford does. I want to see what the Browns do in light of the Chubb injury. He is, as I'm no, I, I'm no doctor, but I play one on TV, and I've won a, won a Grammy. Nick Chubb is done for the season. Like, there is no way of coming back from your leg being bent sideways and you like smacking your head on the ground. Like it, it, there's no coming back from that any time soon. Be patient in Cleveland. You're still one and one. Bengals are 0 and 2. Steelers are 1 and 1. Ravens are 2 and 0, but the wheels will fall off the Ravens eventually. We all know that. We all know how the Ravens do it. But be patient. Be patient. Jim says it's absolutely time to panic. The pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> if you guys don't get the movie quote, you, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to do. The pets' heads are falling off. Uh, Jim, is it time to panic because Nick Chubb was the bread and butter for that team? I mean, obviously, losing anybody is bad. Nick Chubb did have uh, what, like 170 yards on the season, like all, like like all, like all, like already, and he only played half of a uh, uh, game two, right? Let me ask you guys this question: Do you, if you are a Cleveland Brown, do you ride Jermone Ford? Do you entertain a trade with Cam Akers or Jonathan Taylor? Obviously, they're probably going to ask for a first-round draft pick. I don't know how many first-round draft picks the Browns have right now. <laughs> Let's just be honest about it. But the good thing that the Browns do have is they do have one of the best and one of the deepest wide receiver cores in the NFL, I think. With that being said, when we look at this, when we look at this possible trade, Jonathan Taylor to the Cleveland Browns, right? When the Miami Dolphins were in the mix, right, They the uh, Colts wanted Jalen Waddell for Jonathan Taylor. Nice even swap trade. The Browns have some receivers to give away. I'm not saying they would give them away, but they have a Marquise Goodwin still. They have a Cedric Tillman, Elijah Moore, Jonathan Peoples-Jones, would you be willing to trade a Elijah Moore or Jonathan People Jones for a Jonathan Taylor? Would it be a good trade for you? Be, because you have a really deep receiving core. 
even, 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 even if you trade Elijah Moore or Donathan P. Equals Jones, you have a Marquise Goodwin that can step up. You have a David Bell that can step up. You still have a great tie, a tight end that can step up in the Najoku. I would definitely entertain that. Donathan Peoples Jones for JT would be a win win for both teams. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Charger in the house. What's up, David? Hope you're having a grand old day. My man wakes up at 6 a.m. to join the show, man. I, I am so, so good. John says, Chubb, just dust it off. Spit on it, rub some dirt on it. You, you'll be all right. Booby Miles did. <laughs> the panic button. Panic button. Push it. Push it. David says, nice trade. Taylor to the Browns. Would you rather have Jonathan Taylor or Cam or Cam Cam Makers? I feel like Cam's Cam Akers asking price would be a little bit lower. But Casey said, if he comes back, then he's not human, baby. <laughs> he's not human. Oh. This is the area that bred LeBron's attitude of reaction. Browns fans, teams, and owners will cry to the football gods and feel sorry for themselves. No trade going to happen. Boo-hoo us. We have everything. We have a receiver core. We have a we have the quarterback. We, we, we have the running back. We have a great defense. Why us? <laughs> Why us? Why us? Why us? If Taylor is, a, is, is, is available, sure, says John. Good. Problem is, Ursay will want a wide receiver and a minimum of a second-round pick. See, I think, James, I think the asking price for Jonathan Taylor has come down a little bit because of the uh, Zach Moss, right? Zach, Zach, Zach Moss has kind of proven himself that he can be the workhorse, right? Granted, it was against the Houston Texans, not a very good defense, but at the same time, it's still an NFL team. It's still a divisional foe. Zach Moss is back. Zach Moss is 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 healthy. So that lowers the asking price a little bit, right? I think if a straight trade would happen for Elijah Moore and JT across the board, I think that would that would be perfect. I think both sides would be satisfied with that. Now, would they be willing to give up a Donovan Peoples Jones? I'm not for sure, but whatever. Taylor, I live near LA. Cam Akers is an XFL player. No, no, no. Cam Akers is an NFL player. Cam's Akers is is a good running back. Now, he is not great by any stretch of the imagination. Do not get that twisted. But he is decent, right? Granted, he did have 22 carries for 29 for 29 yards in game one. <laughs> so, I don't know. It is what it is. Matthew Stafford has a better average than he does. Is Hunt in the league? No, he is not. Cream Hunt visited with the Saints, visited with the Colts, and visited with the Vikings, and he did not sign with any of those teams. So, he is still available. Uh, Leonard Fournette is still available. R Ronald Jones just got cut by the Dallas Cowboys yesterday or two days ago. So he's available, right? And then you have two two running backs that are on the trade market, Cam Akers and Jonathan Taylor. So we, we will see what happens because there are at least two teams in need of a running back right now. The New York football giants, Shaquan Barkley has a high ankle sprain. She'll be out for about a month. And then obviously um, the Browns. And you could probably say, say the Vikings need a running back as well. He is a complete shit show. Complete shit show. But let's overreact to this. Brown, uh, Chiefs could use a, a wide receiver. Trade Clyde's Edwards Hilaire with the Browns. Huh. Huh. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Didn't even think about the Chiefs in this trade talk here. Because let's just be honest, Clyde's Edward Hol like Hilaire is in the last year last year of, of his deal. They were actually talking about trading him earlier 
this season for like a Delvin Cook or Jonathan Taylor. Chiefs running back, they do have uh, uh, Jarrett McKinnon and Isaiah Paseco still. I, I didn't even think about that. Guys, that might be a great opportunity for both for both teams. Now, obviously, Sky Moore stepped up. Justin Watson stepped up. I mean, we, we necessarily don't need a receiver. We could always use a receiver, right? I mean, if Tooney keeps dropping the balls, cut his ass, right? <laughs> no. But we didn't, the Chiefs necessarily don't need a receiver, but you can never have enough of them, right? So you trade CEH for Donathan Peoples-Jones or something, or hell, even like a second-round pick. I didn't even think about it. Good, good, good point, KAC. That is why I'm glad you were in the chat, man. That is a great point. They, the Chiefs could use a receiver, but trading Clyde I mean, he's just sitting there, sitting there like on the bench. Yes, I like the Chiefs trade you mentioned. How will the tradition of playing in Can uh, in Kansas City and marry your relatives transfer to Cleveland? See, if I remember, Jim. Cleveland is very, very close to Virginia, West Virginia, right? And there's a famous inbred family in the state of West Virginia called the Whitakers. So I feel like even though Cleveland is a part of Ohio, many people think of Cleveland of like they're just their own little state, right? Because we forget that Cleveland is in Ohio. We 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 forget that Cleveland is in a is 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 like even a part of the U, of the of the United States. So I do think West Virginia, you can marry your cousin. You can actually marry your sister if your mom signs off on it. So I think it will translate just fine. <laughs> Casey Morgan, C E D H, underperforms. He does. I agree. So, guys, let's talk about those Kansas City Chiefs. Let's talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs kingdom! Patrick McCombs restructured his deal. Four years, $210 million guaranteed, making him the highest-paid quarterback again in the NFL. So, guys, is it an overreaction that the Chiefs are overpaying or guaranteeing Patrick Mahomes this much money when they know they have a contract of Chris Jones coming up. So guys, obviously money is all arbitrary in the NFL. Money is like monopoly money. You can throw it around however you want and it just kind of just happens, right? NFL teams are never broke. You want a billion dollars? Okay, here you here you go. I'll just make it back on the back end on it, like just just like on you. But Guys, this is smart. This is smart by the Kansas City Chiefs because what they are doing here is they are Patrick, – Patrick, Patrick, Patrick Mahomes is a smart individual. When he signed that 10-year, $500 million deal, it was all backloaded. So the salary cap wasn't really going to be effect until year five, year six, year seven, right? Basically, all they did is they brought all, the, all that money and they moved it up to right – right now what does that do that gives them time to sign chris jones to a long-term deal that gives them an opportunity to sign chris jones to a five six seven year deal let's give him 350 million dollars over seven years but hey we're going to backload that then year two year year three we're going to rework it we're going to bring that all forward just so guys money is all like it is all about manipulation of the books and the Kansas City Chiefs are playing chess while the rest of the NFL is playing checkers. This is not an overreaction. This is this is not time to panic in Kansas City. It's like, oh, we're not going to get any players. No, this is the smartest move they could have ever done. Because now when other quarterbacks are up for their deals, Jared Goff is coming up for like a deal. Dak Prescott is coming up for a deal. Tua is coming up for like a for like a deal. Jalen Hurst just got his deal, but only three year deal, right? Joe Burrow three year deal. All these quarterbacks are now going to be like, man, I want that two hundred ten million dollars guaranteed over four years. Give it to me, baby. 
The Kansas City Chiefs are screwing the rest of the, of, of the NFL because they are playing chess while the rest of the NFL is playing checkers. Wrap your head like around this, guys. They have literally just shrunk Patrick Mahomes' contract down to a four-year deal, brought that money up for four years. So when 2026 roll, rolls around, they can rework it, do, do whatever they want. Chris Jones wants that long-term deal that gave them room for seven years down the road. Chris Jones, we will pay you the $20 million this year. We'll pay you the $20 million next year and the year after that. But year three, four, five, and six, there's your $35 million that you want. We will backload that and then bring it back forward. Rework it. Bada bing, bada boom. Smart, baby. Can't see a cheese fan. Slow it down. Be patient. Trust the system, baby. Chiefs are smart, baby. Brett Veach is the best GM in all of sports. He understands how it works. Understand how it works. It was a smart move. It's all about cash space, baby, says Casey. Jim says, not even a little bit of an overreaction. I can't stand him, and the reason he's the best in the league right now only two QBs with two Super Bowl rings right now, and he is one of them. Jim, if he was on your team, you would love him. Let's just be honest. No, Patty is a generational QB and not easy to replace with an elite lineman. Was it a month ago that we talked about this? You still need some good linemen, right? Uh, linemen are kind of game changers. Chiefs Kingdom needs to be patient with this season. Let the receivers build the chemistry with Mahomes and let it it'll hopefully fall into place. Yes. Casey, you are right. K Casey, you are a Chiefs fan, right? I can't remember for sure. I can't remember if you're a Dolphins fan or a, a Chiefs a, a Chiefs a Chiefs 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 fan. But yes, the Kansas City Chiefs has have a good wide receiver core. MVS, very, very skilled been kind of overlooked his whole career in Green Bay. I thought he was going to pop off for the Chiefs when he first came here, but he's kind of kind of had to earn his keep, right? Earn his role. Sky Moore, kind of a breakout game. Had a touchdown, caught the ball. Tooney, no drops on Sunday. Oh, the, guys, the Chiefs will be just fine. Slow it down. No need to panic, Chiefs Kingdom. Be patient. Just like what Casey said. Let the receivers build that chemistry. Let them understand that Patrick Mahomes has a piss missile coming out of that arm, and he's going to piss missile you the ball every chance he like he can get. He will hit you in both hands. Just just catch it. Jim, great question here. He he says who is more important to their team's success, Parsons or Mahomes? No Parsons. Dallas is worse than Denver's. That is false. So obviously. Both players are very, very important. If both if both of those players are not on their field for their respective teams, it changes a lot, right? It changes a lot. Blaine Gabbert is the backup quarterback for Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, Blaine Gabbert is no Patrick Mahomes whatsoever. Blaine Gabbert is not a starter in the NFL. He might be a good staff guy for about a couple days, but if Blaine Gabbert were to take over for the Kansas City Chiefs for the rest of the season, they would be a completely shift there. They would still probably win eight, nine, eight or nine games, but they were they're no way a Super Bowl favorite team. If Micah Parsons happens to go down for the Dallas Cowboys, yes, it does suck. But the Dallas Cowboys defense right now is so good that missing Micah Parsons would definitely suck, would definitely hurt the pass rush, would definitely hurt the um the run stopping ability even though he's not very good at run stopping but the defense of the Dallas Cowboys they're they're they they are deep they still have DeMarcus Lawrence on the outside they have and they, they have Van Der Esch uh they have Diggs and Gilmore and Kerr still like the defense of the Dallas Cowboys is really really stout also we have not seen the offense of the Dallas Cowboys really start to show out yet so who is more important for the team's success, Patrick Mahomes or Micah Parsons? It's Patrick, it's Patrick Mahomes 100% of the time. Because with Patrick Mahomes on the field, 
they are a Super Bowl caliber team. Now, Michael Parsons does make the Dallas Cowboys a Super Bowl favorite, but they're still a Super Bowl cal caliber team if he is not on the field. Da -da -da -da. Chiefs kingdom for life, says Casey. Welcome to the Chiefs kingdom, my man. Welcome to the Chiefs kingdom. Last patient or panic here on this overreaction Tuesday. Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions safety, C.J. Garner Johnson, is uh, out indefinitely with a torn peck. If you guys have never torn a peck when you're on the bench press, you'll feel it pop and everything goes in the middle and it's instantly black and blue and it just hurts. Nothing you can do but sit there and relax and let it heal. Legitimately, nothing you can do, but he is out indefinitely with a torn peck. Is it time to panic or be patient in Detroit with C.J. Gardner being out? So let's flash back to about 12, 13 days ago when the Detroit Lions took on the Kansas City Chiefs. That defense had some swag. Talking about the Detroit Lions. That Detroit defense was like, look at us. We are them. We are them. We are them. And it was all led by C.J. Garner Johnson. Now, with that being said, I'm going to say be patient. In Detroit, be patient. You guys did well in this draft. This draft was well for the Detroit Lions. They still have Bam Branch. Brian Ban Branch. Mr. I'm not going to pull my socks up and get fined $10,000. He did have that pick six versus the Kansas City Chiefs. They picked up Cam Sutton as well. They still got a pretty good pass rush as well. So, yes, missing C.J. Garner for the rest of the season does suck. Having him out indefinitely does suck. But it does not really change the culture of the defense, I think. C.J. Garner Johnson brought in a little bit more swag, right? But he'll still be in the locker room. He'll still be in the meetings. He'll, be, he'll be still be talking up his team. Brian Branch will just have to step up. Brian Branch is, is going to have to play some safety. Now, they can say Tracy Walker the third, but I don't I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think you've got to put your best athletes on the, like on the field, and Brian Branch is it. Move Brian Branch to safety. Let him eat. They'll be all right. No time to panic in Detroit. Be patient, guys. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. But guys, that is going to be it for today's show. Hour flies by when you're having fun, guys. But tonight, 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 we have the after show. After show is Hoffy and myself will be here. And we are going to release my week three NFL power rankings. So if you guys like talking that shit, if you like talking that stuff, tonight, 10 p.m. East Coast time, right here at Facebook.com and YouTube.com forward slash man hour NFL power ranking show. Also, guys, starting tomorrow, starting tomorrow, we're going to test it tonight, but starting tomorrow, the phone line is back. The phone line is back. I will have the phone sitting right here. It's just me. I'm just a one-man show. I am the producer. I'm the editor. I'm the voice. So you guys are going to call the show. I'm going to answer it. And we can have a conversation on the telephone. Voice. Uh, phone line's back, guys. But we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. But tune in tonight. Power Ranking Show. Let's do it. Man Hour Nation. Rise up. <laughs>